Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm really excited to continue to add to the conversations around field parameters. Now this came up through an idea from a user submission as you can see here on a YouTube comment where they were wanting to know if you could add dynamic names. So I figured out a way as part of the model refreshes to actually have the names change over time where you can see that these labels that you have here for the month names can actually change over time as those progress. And there's a lot of other interesting ways that this continues to stay dynamically with conditional formatting even inside of a table. So let's see all the configurations for this and hop into Power BI and get started. So taking a look at the matrix table down here below, you can see that I have a value for prior month sales for April and current month sales for May. Now these values can actually be set to be dynamic and I have used the field parameters option to create these. Now, if you're interested in the field parameters video, I will link you to that down below so you see how to actually create the field parameters themselves from the start. But here, I wanna come over to the current field parameters that I've already created for my current month and prior month selection. I'm gonna open up the measure and show you how I built this out. Let's scroll in here. Now, the technique comes into play by modifying the names in the start of the field parameters for both of the rows that I have to select my current month and prior month values. I can retrieve the measures themselves here, but I can give them a separate name in this table. So I've actually combined standardized text in here and then a bit of concatenation, specifically calling upon two variables for current month name and prior month name, wrapping them inside of parentheses. And you can see my variables at the top for current month, where I'm simply calculating my max calendar month, where the offset is zero, which means it simply returns for the current month, because the offset of zero for a month offset is in the current month, and a month offset of minus one over here is for the prior month name as well. And both of those into this will then trigger the dynamic name every time we have a model refresh. And some of the nice parts is that can be used both in a table where you can see over here in my values well, I have the current month and prior month selection. So that will return to both of these as individual columns when nothing is filtered. You can also separately use it as a filter in a slicer where these can be individually selected values. Now, one of the other things that I tested and I was appreciative of as I was using this is notice that the titles of the columns might change, so will the conditional formatting stay with that. Now I did find that after applying conditional formatting in the format tab over here, where I come to either current month or prior month sales in these two. Now I did notice, as at least as of today for field parameters, in their preview mode, I do not have a way to apply conditional formatting over here. My usual path to apply it in this section has been disabled you can still apply conditional formatting to standard measures, but it is available at least from the format pane in this section here. And you can see that the data bars have been applied to this. Now let's come up and just do a quick test. I'm actually gonna modify one of the names just by a little bit. Let's go ahead and change the title here just a little bit. So I'm just gonna add something, anything else in here just to at least make the text new. So if I change it here and I close this back out, you'll notice that the title up here has changed for the column. So that value has changed and it's still kept the conditional formatting for it. So in theory then, as this actually moves through time and this becomes June, this becomes May, the conditional formatting below it will continue to stay inside of the matrix table. And it is important to note that this specifically will not update with slicer selection. So these names that you have will not update from a slicer selection on the page. This will happen as part of the model refresh. It's the same way that I've done in previous videos with calculation groups and dynamic names that are being calculated in there as well. So every time a scheduled refresh happens and you move forward in time with those, these values can change for these selections, but they are not dynamic to the point where they will actually change with slicer selections. It's the same limitation that a column has. Column values from a DAX calculated column will change upon a model refresh, but you do not have a way to use a slicer to update the values in a DAX calculated column, similar in this DAX calculated table as well. So DAX calculated columns, tables and field parameters all have that limitation of being able to get updated during scheduled refreshes but not beyond that today. Hopefully this is something you found useful. If you have other suggestions for how to use this, please drop by that in the comments. I would be very curious to see what those are. And in general, if you want to check out more of my videos, check out the recommended videos over here on the right. Otherwise, please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed this. It really helps to get my channel to grow. And otherwise, I'll see you all in my next video.